Is the housing market going to crash in 2023? Here are your answers for my research and my personal experience. I'm gonna cover what the media and news are telling you and why. Two, stop trying to time the bottom of the market. And three, how to never lose money in real estate. Four, what I'm seeing today with interest rates. And the last one I'm gonna cover is what I'm personally seeing in the market myself because I am actively investing in real estate and selling multifamily properties here in California all day long. So let's get right to it. So point number one, why the news and the media is selling you fear? Why is everyone screaming out recession? Why is everyone screaming out that houses are gonna drop 30, 40, even 50% in some areas? I want you to understand something, that real estate is very hyper-local to your market. What I mean by that is that real estate differs a lot by city, by city, by states. It even matters what street you are in a certain town because some streets are a lot desirable than other areas. Like for example, here in San Diego, there are some areas that are in some lesser classy neighborhoods that have taken a little bit of a hit. Nothing crazy, maybe five, 10%, but the areas by the beach where it's very desirable and even certain streets where many people wanna be on, the prices have stayed pretty steady and even gone up in value in some areas. I think the news is really trying to sell you fear because that's how they make money and that's how they get more views. Like even YouTubers, right? They try to clickbait you by saying the market is dropping and they try to say that the sky is falling and that you have to watch out and never buy real estate. Um, it's just all a marketing scheme. I just want to let you know the real facts from someone who's actually in the trenches working in real estate every single day and talking to much smarter people than myself. Last week, NBC came out with an article with Goldman Sachs and Goldman Sachs stated that they were gonna see a huge price drop in the US for single family homes. And in the same week, I read an article stating that and this article, by the way, the second article I'm about to mention was not marketed far and wide, like the first article saying that price were gonna drop. And I heard from the grapevine and from other people on certain real estate news articles that Goldman Sachs is still making all cash offers on houses throughout the country. So they're actively buying properties on the market, while at the same time, they're trying to tell you to not buy don't you think that could be because they're trying to scoop up all the houses on the market and make them as rentals and make the housing crisis worse just so that you won't be buying and the competition will be a lot less by selling fear to you? I don't know, what do you think? After talking with the most brilliant investors, after meeting with economists who are actually following real trends and stats, the huge reason why 2023, uh, 2022 is different than 2008 to 2010 is because there's simply way less supply of homes out there right now for people to live in than there was back then. Millennials needing more space is a huge reason why prices are going up because no matter what happens in the market, if people can afford to provide housing for their family, they're gonna be looking to buy a home. They don't care where the market is. They don't care where the rates are. If they need more space and they have the money to afford a new home, they're gonna keep doing it. So. That's why right now is a lot different than it was you know, 13, 14 years ago. Also, my next point, please stop trying to time the market. This is the worst mistake that real estate buyers, first time buyers, real estate investors make when they're looking to jump into the game. The best quote I ever heard from my mentor, you should buy real estate and wait and not wait to buy real estate. Because imagine if the person who was scared to buy in 2008 to 2010 never bought that property and never unlocked that bull run from 2010 to, to now. I mean, prices have shot up five to 10X in many different markets, even 20X in some markets like here. Imagine if, that person that was bearish missed out on that train. And that's what I don't want for you. And the thing is, if you try to time the market, you're going to make a mistake because you never know what the market truly is going to do. But I can tell you right now, if you live in a city with a growing population and the weather is good and people are moving there, I can tell you right now, your home or your investment property is going to go up in value over time. Now, the other way around, if you're buying property in a dying area where jobs are getting less and less, where people are moving out of, 
that's a different story. So location and the market you choose to invest in or to buy your property in is also very important. But that leads me to my next point, which is how to never lose money in real estate. And this is exactly how you never lose money. So you ask your broker, you ask your agent, whoever it is, your service provider, to send you a sales comparison analysis of all the properties in your area. So let's say you live in Los Angeles and you're looking to buy your first investment property or buy your first home. You would ask your broker for a sales comparison analysis of all the properties that have sold in that zip code over the last six months. Now you're gonna study those properties with your broker so you understand all the values that the properties are trading for in your area. The biggest mistake that real estate investors or first time home buyers make is that they don't see what properties are selling for before they actually buy the property. A lot of people buy off emotion and that's the biggest mistake that any investor can make, whether it's in real estate or not. The most important thing to do when buying real estate or buying any investment is to buy off of knowledge and understanding what the metrics are, buying off the data. So let's say every single property in your sub market is selling for $1 million. The way you never lose money in that market, even if the market drops 30%, you won't lose money if you buy the property at a lower price than what properties are selling for on the open market. So let's say properties are trading all day long, 1 million, 1.1 million, and you see a property that needs some work for $750,000. Now, that property is going to go up in value. You're gonna be walking into equity the day you buy that property. Yes, there might be more work involved, there might be some issues involved, that's why properties sell for a discount, but if you can, if you can solve those problems and study the data and understand that, look, if properties are selling for one million in this area for this exact product type, and I'm going into this property at $750,000, you're never going to lose money. I don't care if the market tanks, even if the market tanks over 25%, you're still gonna be just fine. You'll, you'll still be at market value, right? So usually when you buy those properties, usually if you fix them up like I do, like for example, I bought a property in late 2020. I bought that property for 997,000 and other fourplexes in that area, because the fourplex were selling for about 1.3 to 1.5 million. So I knew at a million dollars, I was getting a good deal. They were all two bedroom, one and a half bath townhomes, about two miles or even a mile from the beach down here in South San Diego and in Imperial Beach. And I bought that property for 997 and I put in about 200 grand worth of work into it. So I was in it for 1.2 million and the property sold for over $1.9 million on the market uh, six or seven months later. Another story I had, was very recent because I wanna show you a more recent case study. I bought a property when rates skyrocketed in Oceanside, that was a three unit property, all two bedroom, one half bath units, great location, three garages. I found that property off market, direct to seller. I sent the seller a text, I followed up with them for about two or three months and ended up getting the deal under contract. When I bought that property, I bought it for $865,000. I knew that was a really, really good deal because a similar comp three or four months ago sold for $1.4 million. Now, I knew the market was softening. I knew we were in a, in a worse market than back then. So I was expecting a value of 1.1 to 1.2 million on the market. So if I was buying a property for 865,000, then I'm doing pretty damn well on the property. And I spoke to a friend of mine who's an appraiser and he thinks the property's still worth somewhere around $1.3 million. And even more once I fix up the property and put in new kitchens, bathrooms, paint, windows, and double the rents. So that those are some case studies on how I've been able to really protect my losses and really have a huge room to grow with upside. Because the way you never lose money in real estate is by having very little downside and having a whole lot of upside. That's how the best real estate investors have all built their empires. My next point, what am I seeing today in the market today? For the last six months, I'd say uh, Q3, Q4 of 2022, 
Business did slow down significantly in my brokerage business. I have a brokerage here in San Diego. We sell commercial real estate. I have a team of about nine agents, including myself and one amazing marketing and operations manager. Our team is great, but we did see a little bit of struggle last half of last year because rates skyrocketed. So this, of course, dealing with two to 3% interest rates the past one to two years, people were spoiled. And when rates went up to six, 7%, people were shocked and took a pause on investing and buying. But recently, people are getting more used to the higher rates and the new normal. And people know that inflation is being curbed. There's a lot less demand all around the economy. So people know that the feds are gonna really cool down on raising those rates. I mean, at the last recent Fed meeting in February this month, they only raised the rates by 25 basis points where you know the last three four times they raised it over 75 basis points at a time so we're probably going to see that or even maybe no raises depending on where cpi ends up but the one main thing i want to tell you about what's going on is that every single person i'm talking to in the real estate service industry like people are seeing applications and new calls like skyrocket i mean i think mortgage applications this past month for refinances was over 27.3% or something like that, which is amazing. So people are getting used to the new normal. They don't think that rate's gonna come down back into the 2% range. I mean, that was fairy tale. It's probably never gonna happen again in our lives because COVID caused that to happen because we were in a state of emergency for a long time. But anyways, I'm seeing a lot of buyer activity come up. I'm seeing multiple offers on some properties. I actually made an offer for a client of mine for a duplex in Mission Hills here in San Diego. And there was 18 offers on the property and it was a beater for 1.2 million. It was a very high priced property, but it was a very desirable location. And there were 18 written offers on the property. And my client wrote above asking by over a hundred thousand dollars. Actually it was $125,000 and she wasn't even close. The property is selling for somewhere around $1.4 million over like right around $200,000 above asking. Pretty insane. So that's what I'm seeing today in the market. So if anyone's telling you on the internet that is just a content creator that's actually not in the market trying to sell you fear, think twice and fact check and actually talk to people who are actually in the industry serving real clients real investors on a daily basis like myself. My last point that I'm sure you're wondering about, where will interest rates be throughout the next 12 months? And as I don't have a crystal ball, and I'm sure no one knows for a complete fact on where this is gonna go, I can tell you right now, it's gonna be a lot more steady than what we've seen in the last 12 months. I think the crazy train of the feds, Jerome Powell raising rates at a skyrocketing rate is over. Of course, their goal of hitting 2% CPI uh, inflation per year is their main thing. And I think they'll get to that a lot faster than they think because I listen to a very informative podcast, I read a lot of articles, listen to very smart economists, and a lot of people think that inflation will be curbed and controlled in 2023. And some people even see rates coming down a little bit from its highs in the next six to 12 months, near the end of the year. So like I said, I just want to tell you what, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing. And a lot of people that are a lot smarter than myself are saying that rates will be pretty steady. So if you're waiting to buy a home or to buy an investment property because you're waiting for rates to come down or rates to maybe go up more and you want to see if the market comes down so you can time the market perfectly, please do yourself a favor and stop waiting and start sharpening your pencil and start underwriting deals because the way you become a great real estate investor and the way you make money is by sharpening your pencil and finding a great deal. There's great opportunities in every single market. There's never a reason why you should stop buying real estate unless you're making enough passive income to where you don't have to buy real estate anymore. That should be your only reason why you're not buying right now because I'm telling you, the smartest real estate investor I ever met with, he's a billionaire, owns over 5,000 units, almost all cash, has almost no debt. He's about 70 years old, one of the best investors in town. And he told me when I was 21 years old, five, six years ago, he told me that he's always seen opportunities in a down market and an up market, and he buys in all markets. He never puts his pencil down. He's always looking at deals. He's always seeing what opportunities on the horizon. So when you think recession, don't be filled with fear, 
be happy that there's gonna be more opportunity because when a recession comes, because we are in a recession technically because the big companies, the corporations are laying off people. A lot of people are down in revenue. Stocks are down significantly. So yes, by the dictionary definition, we are in a recession. But I want you to realize that there's a lot of people that are watching this that might be scared and be filled with fear and freeze and have analysis paralysis, but you're not gonna be like them. You understand that if you look for opportunities and you talk to the right people, you network, you look for deals, you're meeting the right service providers, like a good broker, lender, uh, appraisers, title officers, et cetera. If you surround yourself around a good team right now and look for great properties, I promise you, you're gonna be in a great place. Whether the market keeps going up, keeps going down, whatever it is, sideways, doesn't matter. Whatever the market does, you're gonna be a better investor if you are sharpening your pencil and talking to people every single day. Anyways, if you're new here, my name is Jason Lee. Uh, in the last three, four years, I've sold over $250 million of real estate and sold over 135 properties here in Southern California, San Diego County. And I also own a $50 million real estate portfolio of all multifamily properties comprising of 119 units throughout the county. So if you wanna learn more about my story and how I did it and more free videos like this, feel free to check out my other videos on my channel and please subscribe to my channel and click the like button below. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video.